In today's video, I want to talk about the top three best rare champions from every elemental affinity, guys. The best of the best. We have quite a few awesome rare champions in Dragonair, Silent Gods, and some of you guys might be wondering, which one of these rare champions is the best? Should I invest in this one? Should I invest in that one? What can I do with this one, you know? So I'm here to talk about the top three best from each one of the elemental affinities, guys, and I have quite a few, quite a few favorites, you know, and I gotta say it, it's pretty hard to make a top three because there are quite a few awesome ones. I would say five, six awesome rares in each one of these elemental affinity. Some of them deal damage, some of them offer support, some of them are enablers for other damage dealers. Like starting with the fire element, for example, we have the new additions to the game in season two, Biggs and Percival. Honestly, they're both amazing. I personally prefer Biggs over Percival just because he drops in a lot of uh, a lot of burns, you know. So every turn, basic attack has a 100% chance of inflicting a stack of burn on the target for 10 seconds. Now, he is more of an enabler for other, uh, other burn damage dealers, like Arasis that can come in and explode all the burns. The more attack speed on Biggs, the more burns he's going to put on the enemy. The battle skill selects an enemy and throws an incendiary at them and their side, dealing fire damage upon hit with a chance of inflicting burn. So even more burn from the battle skill. Then you go to the ultimate, strikes an enemy within range five times, each dealing damage and a chance to land burn. So you have a lot of chances to, to land the burn, guys. So he's great to increase the stack of burns on the enemy. Honestly, he's, he's one of the best. Like, there are not many champions in the game that can can do it. And he's probably the second best, in my opinion, actually. Like, he's, he's just too good to, to get the job done. Talking about the next champion, which is Nida, she is a wild hero. I've actually made a video on her recently. She deals so much damage, but she's part of a different architecture, uh, of a different damage architecture, you know, wild hero. So she needs more wild heroes in order to really throw in big numbers. Increases all allies attack by 24% in dungeons. You have the passive increases the hero's wild success rate to 60%, which is very, very good. The battle skill unleashes a fireball dealing fire damage to the enemy. And the ultimate is a single target but unleashes a giant fireball dealing fire damage. 800% attack, guys. And she has a base attack of 1400, which is pretty wow for a rare champion. Awesome to pair her with Erich, with Tonalan, with uh, Alfie, you know. All these awesome wild, uh, wild heroes. Another one from here that's super, super solid, guys, is going to be Dubok. He's actually a bit of a support champion, and he might not be the best support champion in the game, but if you don't have any other support champion for this elemental affinity, he's definitely going to, uh, to step up for you. Increases all allies' defense by 18% in all battles. That's great already. The passive, when allies are inflicted with control, recharges ultimate energy by 25%. Very, very good. You have the battle skill. Deals damage with a chance of inflicting a stun for 5 seconds. And the ultimate grants a shield to each ally within range and dispels all control from them. So if they have stun, frozen, if they have uh, any of these crowd control debuffs, he's going to dispel them and give you a shield, guys. This is very, very strong for a rare champion. Not many champions in the entire game can do this, including legendaries, you know. So definitely a champion that can be used in more niche content if you need him to to give you the shield and, of course, to remove that uh, control debuff from, uh, from your team. Moving over to the next elemental affinity, which is the Frost, guys. We have quite a few of them in here, too. I'm going to start with uh, one of my most favorite ones, and I'm going to go with Forbrit. So this is a champion that you are getting for free. He's a pretty good tank, and a lot of people are sleeping on him because he's not really bringing healing and stuff, but he's great for crowd control. He's great for progression in some areas where you need to control the enemies. With a passive, when taking damage from an enemy inflicted with a debuff, reduces the damage taken by 30%. He has a HP aura for all battles, 18%. Then we have the battle skill, deals damage with a 100% chance to knock up the target. The ultimate, stomps on the ground, dealing cold damage to enemies within range with a 75% chance to inflict stun for 5 seconds. Now, stun is one of the strongest crowd control debuff in the entire game. So powerful on the Feymander, so powerful on the Pillar of Trials. I'm not saying he's going to be the best champion on the high stages, guys. But while you are progressing through it, till you summon better champions, he's actually definitely going to be pretty, pretty good. I use him a lot in the beta. I'm not gonna lie. I use him a lot in the beta as a, 
as the tank, but I, I needed to have some healing with uh, with him. And I'm a bit like, hmm, is he that much better than Loris? Loris is not a bad tank either. I just feel like for some content, he's a, he's a bit better because of what, uh, what he brings. Loris probably, he could be used more against world bosses, you know, which again is very important too. Then we have Usha, one of the hardest hitting champions in the game. You have a HP aura in dungeons, 24%. Every second basic attack at an enemy under frost deals double the damage. Ouch. Ouch. That's already very nice if you have the frost on the enemy. Gains the shield and an attack speed up for uh, 10 seconds. So attack speed up will basically speed up her uh, basic attacks. Then you have the ultimate. Slashes forcefully twice, each dealing 400% attack cold damage to enemies within range, with a chance of inflicting frost for 10 seconds. This skill deals double damage to enemies inflicted with frost, guys. So if you have a frost champion for her, an enabler, she's going to go ham and deal so much damage. And this is a mini AoE, but it can put in some work on the goblin as well, for example, you know. Then we have Rafi. I like her because she brings attack down. Her passive is not bad either. When the hero is dealing damage to enemies inflicted with Frozen, there's a 50% chance of reducing their ultimate energy. So right here we have attack penalty on a single target. Is this, uh, is uh, for 5 seconds only, but it's the battle skill, so you're gonna have it on every, every 10 seconds. Then you have the ultimate. Deals damage to enemies within range, 700% attack, with a chance of inflicting Frozen. Frozen, again, is a, another uh, form of crowd control and is not too bad, honestly. But I'm kind of like in a pickle with Rafi and Gulal, okay? I like Gulal, he deals decent damage, he summons the, the Vulture, then calls the Vulture on the battlefield to attack enemies with a hero dealing 180% uh, attack, and this skill deals attack penalty too. But what I don't like about him is this small cross. On single target bosses, this works perfect, you know? So I feel like she's doing single target attack down, He's doing a single target attack down and maybe dealing more damage. She just offers a bit of crowd control. So it's a bit situational, you know. Uh, that's why I said it's not that easy to make a top three because there are quite a few of them that are, are decent. You know, Nord is a decent uh, Ice Blast, the new damage architecture, but I wouldn't really put him in top three. Moving over to the Necrosis. Probably here is the easiest place where you can make the top three. Magan, absolutely a beast, one of the best rare healers in the game, one of the best rare support champions in the game. Uh, when casting a skill on an ally, dispels one defense penalty from them. Now, a lot of you guys have no idea that this can be used on the Vortex, and time it right with the ultimate skill, she's going to dispel all the defense penalty from your entire team, like a cleanse, if you're timing it. I'm going to do a team on uh, Necrosis and Wildfire in... Uh, in the next few days, so I'm gonna show you how awesome she is because a lot of people have no idea. Actually, I feel like 99.9% .9 have no idea that she works like this, you know. So I'm definitely gonna gonna do a video on this. Battle skill heals an ally by 10% of the target's max HP and recharges their ultimate energy by 25%. This is massive as well to gain so much uh, ultimate energy every few seconds, you know. It's, it's definitely very, very good. Then we have the ultimate. Grants defense up and recovery over time to all allies. So you're getting defense up too on top of the healing. The healing is not the best though. I'll be, I'll be honest from the ultimate. But having that defense up and the passive is massive. Then we have Adri. Adri is massive against wall bosses and some dungeons. Actually, why not? Ignores 30% of the resistance of the enemies inflicted with debuffs. The battle skill deals uh, damage to the enemy with a chance to put accuracy penalty, which honestly... Doesn't even matter. It's pretty relevant. What matters is this one right here. Shoots three arrows, which makes her great uh, as a candidate for the crown of the unclean or witch's remains. Then reduces the ultimate energy by 10%. With a 75% chance of inflicting recharge speed penalty. This is so massive against bosses, guys. You have no idea. Making them to use their skills uh, less is actually huge for your team. Especially on wall bosses where they're constantly gaining stacks of uh, increased attack is a game-changing uh, ability, you know? So she's definitely very solid. And the next one, Edgar is a nice tank too to use on wall bosses. I actually used him a lot uh, last season. Feats as well is very unique, and I, I would put him in top three over, uh, over the tank. With a passive, the more debuffs born, the less damage taken. 
The battle skill randomly dispels one born debuff and gains defense up for 5 seconds, and the ultimate gains max HP and transfers all allies debuffs to the hero. Each successful transfer grants additional healing. So this is such a nice skill. It's, it's not a full cleanse because he's gaining them, but out of the rare champions, he's the best cleanser for the team that you will find. And I feel like there, there's not even an epic that can remove all the debuffs from the, from the team, you know? That's why he's so freaking strong. And how I mentioned, it's pretty easy to make a top three on, a, on this elemental affinity. Radiance. Here we have as well quite a few uh, interesting heroes. Welby is probably the most popular and probably the best uh, rally damage dealer as a, as a rare champion. When gaining rally grants 15% attack up to the hero and one ally for 5 seconds. The battle skill deals damage to the enemy with a chance of granting rally on a random ally for 10 seconds. And the battle skill deals 700% radiant damage to enemies within range. If the hero has rally when unleashed, the skill consumes rally to recharge the hero's ultimate energy by 50%. Which means that he's going to use his ultimate so often. But that can put him in a bad spot because he might not be able to gain rally as often, you know. But his range, which makes, makes, a, makes a big difference, you know. Then, of course, we have Quarian. He's definitely an amazing, amazing hero. I'm a massive fan of him. I've been using him a lot in the Bera in Season 1. The passive has a chance to increase the healing that he's granting to the, to the team. The battle skill grants a shield to a, an ally for 10 seconds and recovery over time. So this can actually help uh, one of your tanks to stay alive if he gets a lot of hits. Or even a champion that's more squishy. The ultimate heals allies within range by 15% targets max HP and grants them defense up for 10 seconds. Which again is very nice to have some healing and defense up. Very similar with Magan though. Uh, I feel like this is a bit better the healing though. I prefer this healing over Magan's. Then here as well we have a, a couple of a uh, couple of different champions that are like, hmm. I do want to give give a big shout out to Meredith. I know she's not a rare champion. She's a she's a common, but she's an awesome healer too. The only thing I don't like about her is that you cannot uh, increase the cooldown of her uh, A3. 14 seconds and 24. Heals allies within range by 25%. The battle skill heals an ally by 20%. And the passive healing from the hero increases by 10%. So if you give her a lot of skill haste, she can definitely compete with some of the rare healers in, uh, in the game, you know. Kaledo is decent too as a rare champion, as a support. Uh, HP aura in all battles. Gains defense up for 10 seconds when casting a skill. When the skill takes effect on an ally with less than 60% HP, grants defense up to the ally for 10 seconds. The battle skill grants ally protection to the ally with the lowest current HP for 5 seconds. And the ultimate heals allies within range by 10% of the target's max HP and 2200 enlightenment. So this again is not a bad ultimate skill, guys. This is a decent, uh, a decent amount of healing. So if you are in need of healers, Keep him in mind, especially this season. I feel like we need a lot of uh, a lot of radiance uh, healers to go with the frost frost team as well. So you have two more options here: Kaledo and Meredith. Lightning again, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to get the top three. Uh, Irina is my most favorite one out of all of these rare champions in here. When the hero deals damage to enemies by skills, grants a 10% max HP shield to the nearest ally for 10 seconds. The effect can be only triggered uh, every one second. The battle skill unleashes chain lightning damage to enemies. Hit chain lightning can bounce among enemies up to three times. So it's kind of like a mini AoE, which makes it great for the goblin, because here you have another AoE with a chance to put attack penalty, with a chance to dispel one buff from there, which is great against the Grave of Curse and other bosses from where you need to remove uh, debuffs and put decrease attack, which is massive as a debuff, and 710% attack damage with a pretty good base attack. She's overall very nice against domains, against goblin, against some other dungeons, and wall bosses too. Definitely keep her in mind. Then we have uh, Anna, guys. She is one of the few cleansers in the game, the second rare cleanser actually. Restores 15% max HP when taking damage that exceeds 25% of the hero's max HP. The effect can be only triggered every 10 seconds. Grants hit recovery to an ally for 10 seconds. And the ultimate grants recovery over time to each ally for 10 seconds and dispels one debuff from them. So it's only one debuff. You see when, where Fitz comes in and takes all the debuffs, but you need him to get rid of his own debuffs uh, afterwards, you know. So 
she's actually nice. She's actually nice when you need uh, something like this, like the flame domain, for example, you know. Awesome, uh, awesome stuff in there. Moving over to the next one, guys. I'm going to give it to Van in here. Grover is nice to, to dispel a, a random buff from an enemy. But I prefer Vanny. She actually deals a lot of uh, a lot of damage, and not just that. With a passive, every third basic attack will deal additional damage. With the battle skill, gains attack up for five seconds and deals damage to the enemy. And the ultimate grants attack speed up to all Dauntless allies for ten seconds. And the big version too. This is actually massive, guys. Getting this attack speed will increase your damage so so much on a dauntless team so definitely don't sleep on her she's actually going to be very very good in uh, in your team moving over to the last elemental affinity guys so we're gonna go over to poison here as well man we have some awesome uh, awesome uh, rare champions i'm gonna start with hexandra she's a free champion that everybody gets she's an amazing healer you will see her you uh, being used in endgame by so many different people by everybody everybody's using hexandra like Tell me a person that doesn't use this Hexandra, at least against a world boss or something like that, regardless what a big Kraken they are, you know? Enlightenment Aura for uh, all battles. When healing uh, allies with HP below 40%, the amount of healing is increased. Heals an ally and dispels a debuff from them. And again, heals all allies within range. So what else you want from a free rare champion? She's absolutely amazing. Sigrid, so much damage, so many debuffs, the best healing prohibition champion in the game. Accuracy aura in all battles. This increases her ultimate energy every time an enemy under a debuff dies. This is such a good skill because it's constantly boosting her ultimate, you know, so you're constantly going to deal a lot of damage. Battle skill. Shoots to toxic arrows, dealing damage with a chance of inflicting healing prohibition for 5 seconds. The ultimate deals damage to an enemy. If all the enemies are, are under debuffs, she will do AoE damage instead. With healing prohibition and attack penalty too, guys. She's literally the best red champion in the game. Such a powerhouse. Definitely do not sleep on her. And we have the next one. Eli is on my list. I like Lorari. I like Danch. But I prefer Eli. With the uh, uh, aura increases ally attack in all battles, 18%. Then you have the passive when dealing damage to enemies under poison, additionally deals derivative damage. You have the battle skill, gains attack up for 5 seconds, then shoots uh, a crossbow at an enemy with a chance to inflict poisons. And the ultimate skill shoots 3 times, okay? This makes him great as a champion that can use the crown of the unclean or the witch's remains artifact to land defense down because the more... The more sh uh, shots you have on a skill, the more chances you have to apply the, the debuff. But this is everything for today's video, guys. The best of the best. Top 3 rare champion in every elemental affinity. If you guys have a different opinion or I'm missing a super amazing champion, let me know in the comments down below. As usual, appreciate every single one of you guys watching and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.